special thanks to Patreon supporter Transfighter8 for making this video possible. Hello ladies and gentlemen, Scare204 here bringing you another Minecraft Modern Warfare Bafta build tutorial. In this tutorial we go ahead and build the JS Otago, Otago class guided missile destroyer. The JS Otago or DDG-177 is the lead ship of her class of guided missile destroyers in the Japan Maritime Self-Defense Force. She was named after Mount Otago. She was laid down by Mitsubishi Heavy Industries in Nagasaki on April 5, 2004. Launch and ceremony happened on August 24, 2005, and she was commissioned on March 15, 2007. The ship itself doesn't have too much an extensive service history. It's pretty much Jap uh, Japan's main kind of um, brand new, I guess, most modern um, destroyer uh, class, and uh, is kind of reminiscent of the Arleigh Burke. And you'll see here, once we kind of do a little bit of a fly around, you'll definitely see um, what I'm talking about. Really gorgeous ship though, and um, a really nice ship to kind of expand onto our Japanese Navy. We did kind of a nice kind of late Cold War, um, kind of I guess early Modern Warfare uh, destroyer, and this one here is just kind of like the peak and most advanced destroyer that they are currently um, fielding. Um, but before we go and take a look at this build, I do want to go ahead and give a special thanks to Patreon support Trends Federate for making this tutorial possible. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel more you already do, feel free to check out my Patreon page. Link is always in my video description where you can go ahead and put a small amount to the channel every month. And in doing so, earn a view core request to your choosing. It really helps support the work I do on my channel. It's really greatly appreciated, so definitely feel free to check that out. Again, link is always in my video descriptions. With that though, let's go and dive in here and take a look here at the JS Otago. So going ahead and getting started here, we have obviously the bow of the ship here. Nothing too fancy with it, just a pretty traditional bow. Uh, we do have the deck mounted uh, gun, and then as we work our way back further, we have our first failing system as well as the whole conning tower system and all that stuff. Obviously all your uh, equipment and all that up on top. As we progress further back, we have our two funnels, and we have our uh, lifeboats on the side here, and some um, basically um, missile launchers located in this midsection here. Then uh, further back, we have again more of these uh, kind of uh, targeting systems, more uh, basically missile pods and again in our failing system on the back so again just looking at the side profile here it definitely has that Arleigh Burke um, look to it almost feel like it actually is Arleigh Burke that the Japanese just kind of made their own um, but pretty interesting uh, ship overall um, and then obviously the flight deck and everything like that so really nice looking ship and um, hopefully uh, basically the design we'll see for the uh, new Arleigh Burke, which will hopefully come sometime soon as well. I do think this ship is actually a little bit bigger in terms of like its length compared to the um, Arleigh Burke, especially with the bow being quite a bit longer. But yeah, really nice looking ship, and overall will make an awesome addition to any of your modern bath to build um, scenarios. That's a nice kind of Japanese um, surface uh, capital ship. But with that, let's go ahead and move into the tutorial by beginning with our first layer, layer number one. All right, guys, so going ahead and moving into our first layer here, we'll be going ahead and starting off with layer one. Now, if you're completely new to my BAFTA build tutorials, we'll be like to structure these first few layers, especially when we're building the whole portion and both sides are symmetrical, is I like to do half on camera, half off. What this means is we're going to be building the entire center line of the ship, and then we'll be building the right side, and then we'll be up to you guys to take the right side, copy it over to the left side. Pretty straightforward stuff, and once we kind of get through the uh, first few layers here, it should make a little bit more sense as to what we're doing. Um, but, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and dive into it. Now, layer one here, we do need to make sure we position correctly in the water. Obviously, a lot of you guys are probably going to want to build this ship in the water, so to make sure that you build this correctly, um, in its depth that it should be, you want to make sure that you have this basically one block underneath the water surface. You can see here we have the, uh, line here of blue representing the water level, and you can see basically our layer here is just right below it. So, very important to make sure that's correct, because if not, when you put this in the water, it is going to sit very weird. So, just again, take the time, make sure that is good to go, and once you're um, good to go on that. We can go ahead and continue on. So the first thing we're going to go ahead and do here is we're going to place down two upside down pistons. Now, if you're not on Java Edition, I would recommend instead pistons using red concrete blocks. Uh, we will be going ahead and modifying the pistons here for a little tool that we have here on um, on uh, Java Edition. So um, we will be going ahead and doing a little bit of a modification of that. But again, if you're on a different version other than Java, go ahead and use red concrete. After that, we're going to go ahead and place down a uh, acacia wood sign here on the very front side like that. And then going back from these two blocks here, we're going to go ahead and then place down a row of brick top slabs. This row here is going to be a total of 26 blocks. And those are all brick top slabs. We then want to go ahead and go to the sides here, on the sides of the pistons or the red concrete blocks. We're going to place down two acacia wood signs like that on the side. And then we're going to go ahead and go back one, two, three, four, five. And our six brick slab here, we're going to go ahead and then place down two acacia wood trapdoors to the side. 
And we would then want to go ahead and place down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17 brick slabs back. An acacia wood fence po or fence gate and then two end rods. A acacia wood fence gate again. And then a birch wood top slab like that going back. Um, after we have that all done, uh, we then want to go ahead and go to the sides. And we're going to go ahead and count from the front here. We're going to count from this brick slab. And we're going to go ahead and go back a total of nine. So we're going to go ahead and go on this side here. We're going to go all the way back to our ninth brick top slab here. And we're going to go ahead and come off of this with a brick slab. So it's going to kind of come down an angle like so. And that will be done on both sides there like that for the little stabilizers there for the, for the ship. And with that all out of the way, that right there is going to basically conclude what we have for that uh, bottom section there. And um, that right there is going to include layer one. So again, here's an overview view of what it should look like from up above. Take weed down the right side, copy over the left side, and you'll be good to go. Um, there are some concerns here and there that end rods cannot be placed in water. If you cannot place down the end rods in water, then very simply just use fence gates to go all the way across there. Um, anyways, though, that is it for what we have there for layer number one. And with that, let's move on to layer number two. Moving on to our next layer, we have layer number two. For layer two, we're start by placing our red stainless paint on top of this piston. We're going to go ahead and place down a row of red concrete blocks. That's going to go all the way back a total of 28 blocks in length. And uh, this right here is just going to make the center line of your ship. And on the very end here, it should stick one red concrete block past that brick top slab. We're going to place down two more brick top slabs, then two more acacia wood trap doors going back. After that's all done, going back up to the front here, we're going to go ahead and place down... Uh, one and two red stained glass panes come off the third and fourth block there. And they're going to place down two brick walls, followed by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty uh, red concrete blocks back. And then we want to place down one and two brick ups downstairs, a brick top slab, a cache wood trap door, and we're going to go then place down a um, brick ups downstairs, like so. So like that, and then a acacia wood trap door going back like that. So it's, that's right there is what it should look like on the back there. Then going out to the sides here, we're going to go and grab our red stained glass panes. We're going to go to the third red concrete block from the front here on this outside row. We're going to place our red stained glass pane coming off of it, followed by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16 red stained glass panes going back like that. After that's all done, uh, that right there is going to basically conclude what we have there for layer number two. And with that, let's move on up to layer number three. Moving on to our next layer, we moved on to layer number three. For layer three, to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to start off by placing down a brick up down stair on top of this red stained glass pane. We're going to go ahead and go back from the stair with a stone block, then a second, third, and fourth, so you have a total of four stone blocks. We're going to go ahead and place down a gray wool block, and we then want to go ahead and build a long row of stone that's going to go pretty much all the way to the back of our ship. This row in total is going to be 26 blocks long with an anvil on top of this last acacia wood trap door on the very end. After that, going to the sides, we're going to place down a light gray stainless pane, come off the side of this stone block here, so the second one, then a second glass pane back, then an andesite wall, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, and 28 stone blocks back. After we have that done, we want to go ahead and then place down a item frame, come off the side of this block here. Then a light gray bed in the item frame, and it should be rotated around like this. So we want the pillow facing toward the inside. And then also, if you're on Java, um, we can go ahead and place down a birchwood sign on the side there of that block as well. Note that this is only going to be a Java feature. If you're on Bedrock or Pocket Edition, you will not be able to place an item frame and sign in the same block space. So just go ahead and place down the item frame and disregard the sign if you're on a version other than Java. At this point, we're going to go to the sides, take our light gray stainless panes. We're going to place down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10... 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and 26, like racing us pains going forward like so. The last thing for us to do is to go ahead and take a birchwood button. We're going to place it down on the side here of the stone block on both sides like that for the numbering. And that right there is going to conclude layer number three. One thing I would like to mention is for us Java players, we will be going ahead and modifying our pistons now. To do this, we're going to go ahead and type in the command slash give space at p minecraft colon debug underscore stick and this right here is going to be your command by pressing enter you'll get this kind of glowing stick and basically to use it very simply we're going to go, and go to these pistons and we're just going to place down one or we're just going to go and right click them until we have them extended true now you can left click them until you get selected extended and it should say false 
so it'll look like this and then when you right click it extend it true so that we get rid of that wood portion there just kind of makes it look a little bit nicer and really helps us grab that nice shape there for the uh, bulbous bow there on the front Anyways though, that right there is going to conclude everything for layer 3, and with that we're going to be going ahead and moving into layer 4. Now layer 4 we will start to go ahead and build the whole layer all together as we do have a lot of detail that starts to uh, come into effect here, so we will be building this pretty much all together. So with that, let's go ahead and move on up to layer number 4. Alright guys, so moving on to layer 4 to go ahead and get started with here. We want to go ahead and begin with by going ahead and placing down a stone upside down stair that's going to be coming off this one going forward. We're going to go ahead and place down a stone block right behind it. After that, we're going to place down a skeleton skull on both sides of these stairs, and then I'll like raise stigma's paint going back from them, like down the side of this stone block. We then want to place down two pistons, like this going back, if you're on a different version um, other than uh, Java. I would recommend probably just another stone block here, and then a um, and then a slab, a stone slab, like that going back. Um, but yeah, for us on Java, we'll go ahead and use our piston method. We're going to go then place down a like raised stigma's paint going back from this one here, on the sides. And we also want to go ahead and grab an item frame on the sides here, this first glass pane we're placed on an item frame, and then a crossbow in the item frame, rotated so the crossbow is facing downwards for the anchor. After that's done on the side of this piston here, we're going to place it on a skeleton skull to both sides. We then want to go ahead and grab a stone cutter. We're going to place it on a stone cutter like so. And then we then want to place down a skeleton skull on top of these glass panes at a very slight angle like so, so it's just going to have that slight angle to it like that. Then taking our daylight detectors, we're going to place down a row of three across. We're going to turn those to night mode. Then one back on both sides. Again, turn to night mode. We're going to go then place down a polished andesite block here in the center. And then coming off this block, we're going to go and grab an end rod. And we're going to place down an end rod like so. So you should have that gray carpet underneath it. Or I should say gray wool underneath it uh, to kind of keep that consistent deck color. After that though, we're going to go and then place down one and two dark oak trap doors back on both sides. And then again, taking our daylight detectors, we're going to place down one and two going back from the polished andesite block. Uh, make sure you do close those dark oak with trap doors as they will open with the daylight detector set to day mode. And then we're just going to place down a gray carpet on both sides like that. After that's done, we're going to go then place down a stone block here. And then after that, we're going to go then place down a light or a skeleton skull at a very slight angle like that to both sides. After we have that done, we're going to place down another stone block here in the center. And then we're going to place down a stone stair to both sides. And then a skeleton skull to both sides like that of that stair. With that done, we're going to then place down a row of three of stone blocks across. Then a second row of three. And then in this section right here, we're going to go and place down a gray wool block here in the center. And then a narrow stone block to both sides. Then taking our light gray stainless panes, we're going to place down a row of three on the side here. And a row of three along the side as well. After that, we're going to place down one, two, three, and four stone blocks down the center. Uh, we then want to place down a row of andesite walls. One, two, three. One, two, three. And then one and two birchwood fence gates here. They're going to be opened up toward those walls. So just like that. And then we're also going to go ahead and place down a iron trap door coming off the side here of these walls. We're going to go ahead and place down an iron trap door coming off the sides of that stone block. And then after that, we're going to place down a stone block here in the center with a stone slab to both sides. Coming off that stone slab, we're going to place down a birchwood sign. Or actually, my bad, sorry. It's going to be um, a row of three of stone full blocks and then a stone slab out to the side. So my apologies. And then a birchwood sign on the very outside here. Then we're going to place down a narrow row of three of stone full blocks across. This is going to be followed up with a stone stair. So like upside down like this to both sides. And then after we have that done, we're going to then take our stone full blocks. We're going to place down a row of three across. A second row. A third. Four. Five. And we're going to go and stop at five rows back. At this point here, we're going to go and place down a stone block here in the center. A polished andesite block to the left side of the ship. And then a stone block over here to the right side. We'll then take our light gray stainless paints and just run a row all the way along the side here. Um, and this stair here, it shouldn't be upside down. It should be a normal stair like that. And also a birch with sign come off the side of that stair. And same thing should be over here. I'm not sure why I made that upside down. So just make sure that's consistent on both sides. And again, same thing, light gray stainless paints run along the side here. On these first two glass panes, we're going to place down two item frames. And in those item frames, we do want to go ahead and place down some iron bars here for this venting. Or something of that sort here on the side of the ship. And then on the very back here, uh, we basically have our flight deck to go ahead and work on. So we're going to need some white carpet, some gray carpet, and some yellow carpet. We're going to place down a row of three of gray carpet, then a yellow carpet to both sides. We're going to go and then place down a white carpet in the center, yellow carpet to both sides, then a gray carpet on the very outsides. Then we're going to go ahead and go back one gray carpet on both sides, a yellow carpet going back from that yellow carpet, and then a gray carpet in the center. We're going to go ahead and place down a yellow carpet in the center, then two gray carpet, or sorry, one gray carpet out to the sides. 
a row of three of gray carpet, white carpet in the center, gray carpet to both sides. And on the very back here, uh, we're going to go ahead and place down a redstone repeater on top of these stone blocks like this. So the repeaters are kind of facing toward the inside there. In the center here, we're going to place down a birchwood fence gate. And we're going to open this toward the back of the ship. And we then want to go ahead and place down two blocks up. We're going to delete this first block. And coming on the bottom of this block, we're going to place down an end rod like that here for the back mast. Now, after that is all done there, we also want to go ahead and grab our iron bars. And we're just going to place down a row of three of iron bars going up from this glass pane like down the back there. And after we have that all done, that right there is going to conclude what we have there for layer number four. Um, kind of just a lot of laying our foundations here for the build, so nothing too crazy going on, but um, yeah, just basically a lot of foundation set up and what we're going to kind of expand upon in our next few layers here. Um, in addition, for us Java players, we'll go ahead and go back up to the front of the ship and we will go ahead and right click those pistons again with our debug stick to get rid of that wood portion on top of them. Just be careful, if you do break a block or anything around these pistons, it will cause them to reset back to their normal state. So just keep that in mind, try not to uh, mess with those pistons too much, um, as they will revert back and you'll have to uh, constantly fix them. Anyways though, uh, with that, let's go ahead and continue on to our next layer, layer number 5. Alright guys, moving into our next layer, we have layer number 5. For layer 5 to get started with here, we're going to place down a birchwood fence cake here on top of this stone block, and we're going to go ahead and open this door to the front of the ship like so. Doing the same thing we did on the back, we're going to place down two stone blocks up. First delete, delete the first one, and then an end run on the bottom of the block, like that, to go ahead and create our little mass there in the front. After that, we're going to go ahead and place down a redstone repeater on this stone block here, and we're going to go ahead and separate the notches apart from each other, like so. And that right there is going to conclude the front of the ship. Now once that's done, we're going to go, ahead and go back to this section here. We're going to place down a stone block on top of this one, and we're going to go ahead and place down a diorite wall. Now, when you get to this point here, uh, depending on what version you're on, it's going to kind of limit what you can do. If you're on Java, we'll be able to do a little bit more features to it. If you're on Bedrock or Pocket Edition, you really won't be able to do much from this wall. Um, but yeah, basically to expand upon this, if you are on a different version, uh, we can go ahead and do some cool techniques here. And this technique is going to be first going ahead and placing down a block that comes kind of too forward from the wall here. So you have a space of one right here. We're going to place down a tripwire hook here on the side of that block. And then we can go ahead and use our debug stick now. By left clicking until we get selected facing and we can go and right click it until it rotates and it connects up to our wall or presumably connects up to our wall at this point here we can also modify our wall so we can go ahead and left click our wall and um, we can actually extend it in different directions now this might take some playing around with because obviously depending on what version you're on will kind of or uh, what direction you build the ship will change what direction is being changed here so we're going to go ahead and extend the one side lower and that's going to go toward the front there. This back section, however, we want to go ahead and get rid of that connection altogether. So basically, you want something that looks like this here for your kind of failing system here on the front of the ship. Um, just kind of a nice little design there for it. And again, with the job features, you're able to kind of create a cooler design for it and just kind of make it look a little bit nicer overall. So yeah, there's a, you know, obviously more options and more detail you're able to do being on Java. But uh, obviously, the, there's the alternative of just having the wall there. Um, anyways, though, continue on. We're going to go then place down an inside wall to both sides of this stone block. We're going to go ahead and then place down an iron frame on the sides there of those inside walls. And in those iron frames, we're going to place down a white bed, rotate on its side like so. And we also want to go ahead and grab a birchwood sign and just place down a birchwood sign on the side of that wall as well if you're on Java. After that, we're going to go ahead and then place down a row of three of stone blocks across, then a narrow stone block in the center, and a side wall to both sides, iron frame on the side of the wall, white bed, rotate on its side, and a birchwood sign. Same thing will be done over here iron frame, white bed, birchwood sign, like that. After that, uh, we want to go and then place down a iron trap door right here. And we're going to go and then place down a gray carpet on top of these two stone blocks to both sides. We then want to place down two stone blocks down the center, two end set walls, like that. And after that, we want to go and then place down a white bed on top of these fence gates. You can place them by crouching and placing. Then uh, this section here, we're going to place down a birchwood fence gate here in the center, open it up toward the stone block, and then a birchwood fence gate coming off that open fence gate, and then a stone brick slab to both sides like so. Then on the very top here, we're just going to place down a skeleton skull, like so, and we'll leave that as be for right now. At this point, we're going to go then take our gray carpet, we're going to place down a row of three across this space here. Then two stone blocks down the center, two inside walls to the sides, and looks just like that. We then want to place down one, two, three, four, five stone blocks down the center. We're going to go then place down one, two, three, like race name was panes, one, two, three, and one, two, one, two, and a set walls, and then a row three across the back here like so. After that's all done, we want to go and then place down a gray bed on top of these glass panes here. Just like that. 
And we then want to place down a iron trap door on top of these second to last panes here. And then after that, we're going to go ahead and place down a daylight detector. And we'll turn those to night mode, like so, on both sides. Then on the very center uh, in the wall, we're going to place down an item frame. We're going to go ahead and place down a black bed in the item frame, rotate on its side. And same thing uh, we did in the front there. Uh, we're going to place down a birchwood um, sign across the back there if you're on Java. And that right there is all we have for layer number five for the build. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving on to our next layer, which will be layer number six. But taking a look at it from above here, this we should have for the top down view so far for it. Anyways, so with that, let's move on to our next layer, layer number seven. So yeah, we're actually moving on to layer six. Don't know why I said seven, but let's go ahead and continue on. We're gonna go ahead and place down a stone block on top of this one right here, and then we want to go and then place down a bird, or sorry, a skeleton skull going forward from it like so. We're gonna go ahead and place down a light gray stainless paint to both sides of that, and then after that, we're gonna go ahead and then place down a narrow stone block in the center, followed by another anisette wall to both sides. We're gonna place down a narrow stone block in the center here, and then a light gray stainless paint to both sides. We're going to go ahead and then place down a birchwood fence gate. That will be coming off the center, or this uh, iron trap door here. And then we're going to place down two stone blocks down the center here. Two light gray stainless panes on both sides. And coming off those glass panes, we're going to place down item frames, like so. And in said item frames, we are going to go ahead and place down some iron bars, like so. After that, uh, we then want to go ahead and place down an air stone, stone block on top of this one here. We're going to place down a birchwood fence gate coming off that, like so. And then a skeleton skull on both sides of the fence gate. After that, uh, we're going to go ahead and place down an air stone block back, two light gray stainless panes on both sides here, two iron frames, and then iron bars in the iron frames, and same thing over here. We're also going to place down a stone block right here. Then uh, we want to place down a grindstone, like so. After that grindstone, we are going to go ahead and place down a gray carpet, and we're going to go ahead and place down a daylight detector, like so. Once uh, that's done, we're going to go ahead and place down a diver wall, in this section here and we can go and use the same technique we used before just right here so our tripwire hook here we'll go ahead and left click the tripwire hook until we get selected facing and we'll go ahead and right click it so it rotates around and again we'll change the properties here of this um, wall so that we have this side kind of lowered and coming off toward the rear of the ship so uh, just go ahead and make those simple adjustments there for that wall there again you can just place down a direct wall if you do not have access to the debug stick on a different version but yeah, with that, that is going to conclude what we have there for layer 7. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving on to layer number 8. Moving into our next layer, we do have layer number 8. For layer 8, to go ahead and get started with here, we are going to place down a polished anisite upside down stair on top of this stone block here. Then we're going to place down a stone block behind that, and then a polished anisite stair to both sides. After that, we're going to go ahead and place down a skeleton skull on both sides of the stair. And we then want to place down a birchwood sign coming off the face here of the stair, like so. After that's all done, uh, we also want to place down an item frame, come off this stair here. And we're going to go ahead and place down a black bit in the item frame and rotate on its side. And a birchwood sign that goes across it like so. After that's done, on the back here, we're going to go ahead and place down a narrow stone block in the center. Then a skeleton skull on both sides. And then lastly, we're just going to place down a stone brick stair, come off that stone block. Uh, once that's done there, we want to go ahead and then place down two polished black stone walls down the center. Then two black stainless panes to the sides. We're going to go ahead and then also place down a dark oak wood fence gate coming off this wall here, opened up toward it. We then want to place down a iron trap door on top of this fence gate right here. And we're also going to go ahead and follow this up by placing down a iron, or sorry, an end rod on top of those two skeleton skulls. And going up from those end rods, we are going to place down two uh, iron bars going up. Also, in addition, on top of this dark oak wood fence gate here, we're going to place down an air fence gate and open this one up toward the back. Once we have that done, we're going to place down two polished black stone walls going back like so, and two black stained glass panes on the sides there of those walls. We then want to grab a grindstone, and we're just going to place another grindstone here on top of this stone block like that. And after that's all done there, that is going to conclude what we have there for uh, layer number um, seven. And with that, we'll probably go ahead and just move into our last final layers of the build. So with that, let's go ahead and finish off the rest of the build. Moving into our next layer, we have layer numbers, uh, basically our last final layers, honestly. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. So first thing we're doing is we're going to place down a daylight detector on top of this stair here. We're going to go and turn this to the night mode. We then want to go ahead and grab a barrier block and we're going to place this down on both sides of this, um, this uh, daylight detector. To get a barrier block, if you're on Java, you can use the command slash give at p uh, minecraft colon and we'll type in barrier and this right here will be your command uh, by pressing enter you'll get a barrier block 
Now, uh, one thing to keep in mind is that on different versions of Minecraft, I do believe they refer to it as a structure block, but it should just be an invisible block that you can place and you can connect blocks to. So for us, we're gonna go and place down birds with signs on the side there of those um, barrier blocks. And as you can see, they do disappear after you uh, remove the barrier block from your um, hand. Uh, we're gonna go then place down a grindstone uh, right here going back from that. And then we just wanna go and then place down an iron trap door on top of these two stairs. We're gonna go ahead and also place down a stone block right here. And then to the sides of this, we wanna go and place down a diorite wall like so. After that, uh, we're gonna place down a skeleton skull here in the center. And then after that, we wanna go ahead and then place down another barrier block, which will be in the corner here between those skeleton skulls and those walls. Now we're gonna go ahead and then take stone buttons and wrap them around these two sides here of the barrier blocks. After that, we're gonna go ahead and then place down um, a barrier block that goes up from these ones in the back here and then one out to the sides. We're gonna place down buttons on the sides here of these barrier blocks like so and also on top of those. So just like that there for the back. After that's done we then want to go ahead and place down a anisette wall which will be right here and then a birchwood sign on both sides of the walls. So just like that. And after we have that done, we're going to go ahead and then place down an iron trapdoor here. And we're also going to place down a barrier block to both sides of the iron trapdoor. We're going to go then also take rails. We're going to place down a rail here, and then one going up. Same thing here, one here, and one going up as well. Then after we get to this point, we're going to place down a stone brick upside down stair on the very top. So that will be on top of that wall, like so. And then we're also going to place down a skeleton skull on top of that iron trapdoor. After that's done, we're going to go ahead and then place down a birchwood fence gate to both sides of the stair, and then a end rod that will be coming off the um, fence gate, and we kind of want to position them so they look like this. So you have the base of the end rod facing out to the sides, so like that. And then go ahead and go into the back here of that stair, we're going to go ahead and also place down a skeleton skull. Going up again, we're going to go and place down a andesite wall on top here, then a end rod to the two sides like that out to the sides. And then a skeleton skull going forward from it. Then the end rod on top. And then a skeleton skull on the very top of that end rod like that. To go ahead and conclude our mass there. And with that, that right there is going to conclude what we have for the final layers of the build. And that right there will finish off our tutorial here for the JS Otago. Otago class guided missile destroyer. Hopefully you guys do enjoy this tutorial and are able to put it to good use. If you do want to abuse this build, I do ask that you guys give me proper credit for it. This will be linked from a sign of the build tweet to my channel or this video if this does appear any social media sites. As long as you guys give me proper credit for it, your free or fair project you guys are working on overall enjoy the build. Have fun with it and all that fun stuff. Um, with that though, again, a big special thanks to Patreon supporter Trench Fighter 8 for making this tutorial possible. And as always, feel free to check my Patreon page. Link is always in my video descriptions. Uh, with that, uh, thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Gary204, and I'll see you guys next time.